everyone. Welcome to Digital Charcuterie. It's Batman Talk here on the channel. Joining me today is Andrew Fantasia from the Andrew Fantasia YouTube channel and also his novel side scroller, which I'm sure is on his desk right now, right beside him. Wait, oh, it's not. It's, it's not. Look at that. I ha, ha, ha. He's a fake author. Uh, that's right. Look, your copy is across the room from me. I'm looking at it right now. I'm not going to get up to get it, but check out his book on Amazon. All right, we're going to talk about, look, the Batman is on HBO Max. It broke like all kind of records on HBO Max on Monday. People were obsessed with it. Marvel was like, we are not having any of this. We are dropping the Thor trailer. And they dropped the Thor trailer to kind of, to, you know, take you away from Batman. But I guess people watched both because a Thor trailer is, you know, two minutes and a Batman movie is three hours. But it broke a kind of records as did the Thor trailer. Great week to be a, a superhero fan, you know. They, we joke that they compete, but and they do obviously. But who cares? We win. Like, like they, they produce, we win. And what's happening is also Moon Knight is 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 halfway through. I believe Moon Knight is almost uh, on the, or is there only six? It's almost done. Moon Knight is on its way down. It's it's on its way out the door. It's two thirds done. And Doctor Strange is on his on his way in the door, and um, also the door is also open at Arkham Asylum. We're going to talk about Arkham Asylum here, but don't forget to give us a like and a subscribe and hit that bell to stay up to date with all of our videos that we do on the channel. We talk about Batman in depth and all these other fun stuff as well. It's a lot of fun to talk about it. We're, next week, we're going to talk about Fast 10 because Andrew demanded that, and I said we don't have time for that today. So we're going to do that on Monday. All right, anyway... Uh, <laughs> We're going to talk about the Arkham Asylum show. This show started off as a GCPD show, and I'm kind of glad it deviated away from that because yes. I wasn't really in on that because we already had the Gotham show to begin with. And I'm not, I don't like a lot of television. Sorry to ruin your day, everybody. But, you know, when it comes to these type of shows, I'm not really into them. And I'm not into police illegal procedurals. That's not my thing. And I didn't really know what they were going to do. If Batman's not a part of it, but Batman's there, what are you going to do? Anyway, it manifested itself into the Arkham Asylum show, which is apparently like a haunted house show. So I don't know how you got from one to the other, but I'm fine with the outcome of this all in all. But this is a, this looks like it's going to be a fun show uh, if it ever happens. That's also We should also mention that because I don't really... Even though it's Matt Reeves, I still don't have all the faith in the world that this is happening. The Penguin show has been greenlit. But unless it's James Gunn, I, my confidence in things happening are minimal. Because he's, seen, he's like, he woke up one day, he's like, I want to do a Peacemaker show. And then, like, all of a sudden, they had a Peacemaker show in the can. Like, that's how you do it. So this Arkham show, I don't really know what to expect. There's been a lot of talk and speculation about it, the Haunted House aspect of it, though. Before we get into it, Andrew, what are your thoughts on, on what we know so far of the Arkham show, which, of course, is very little? Well, I'm also very glad it is no longer a GCPT show. Uh, for, you know, it's the same reason I, I brought up before um, when we were talking about Peacemaker, actually, how I just don't see the appeal of you have these huge superhero movies and then you do spin off shows about things nobody cares about. Uh, so when I was watching Suicide Squad, like I told you, I'm just like, why do I need a show about Amanda Waller's accountant and James Gunn's girlfriend? Like, I don't care. I don't care. And the same thing was happening here because back when we saw Batman, it was still a GCPD show, I believe. They hadn't made that change yet. I think and it was on that week, yeah. It was around the same time, yeah. So once that movie was done, I was thinking the same thing. Like, oh my God, why do we need a show about that guy with the goatee who doesn't trust Batman? Like, who cares? There are so many more interesting characters. So I'm really glad they are veering away from GCPD and just focusing on Arkham because that is what people want. Please, for the love of God, keep giving people what they want. Take a page out of the Feige playbook. Uh, and it looks like they're doing that. So yay, that makes me very, very happy. And the Arkham show, I mean, Reeves is going to use the villains that he uses in the movies. And it's looking like we're going to get towards a court of owls at some point. That's what it, and he, you know, I know he mentioned Mr. Freeze, but what the Arkham show does is it lets you use the Rose Gallery of villains that Batman has in any way you want on TV where some of them probably should belong. Like there's so many good characters that just, you know, they might not translate on film. They might not be someone that will get you out of your house to go see, but on TV it'll work. And I think that's why the Peacemaker show works so well too, right? It was like a Peacemaker movie might not have gotten you out of the house, but a show you're like, I'll sit down and give this a chance. And I think that's where Arkham Asylum can really flourish is in that regard. And, and I think there's a lot to be said there. There's so much you could do. I mean, we've all played the Arkham games, but this is, I don't think this will be anything like the Arkham games. Like, I think you keep, you don't even need Batman near 
the Arkham show whatsoever. I hope it's exactly like the games. I it's, want Riddler trophies. I want unlockable skins. And I don't want the Batmobile till season four. Sounds good. I, I I do hope, though, that it stays. I hope they keep Batman away from it. And I hope we hear whispers of Batman. And he's like this lingering being outside that no one really knows when he's going to strike. And they all kind of have this. It's kind of like what the movie gave us, but a little bit of fear, like in the shadows at the beginning of that movie, but it's all over Arkham where they're like, we could escape, but the Batman is waiting for us outside to come and get us. Um, and, and, the, you know, some characters that really obviously work in this show would be Hugo Strange. We talked about this a little bit before. Hugo Strange, I think, would be great in this. I also think Harley Quinn, uh, Quinn Dr. Quinzel would be a p- perfect piece to fit in there as well. And, uh, you know, and, and uh, the Scarecrow could be a character as well that we see kind of show up in there in different ways. And, and all, all three of those don't have to be villains of this story or they could be kind of like twi- they could be twisted, but they're not the villains that we're paying attention to. But then you learn that they have a darkness within them. And that could be an intriguing part to follow the show as well. Yes. And the idea of them having these psychoses because they're all you know everybody's got a diagnosis in the batman universe here what i'm looking forward to is if they play with the idea of batman is this unseen thing that they know about and they're aware of but nobody's really 100 percent sure what he is imagine james if every single villain on this show had their own interpretation of who or what is the batman and we get to maybe even see that it, like shown to us visually, ooh, that would be a lot of fun. I think the visuals of this show could be king if they play their cards right. <clears throat> they have to play their cards right. I'm also curious, you know, because we're also talking about, you know, all this stuff, but for them, the Arkham show could be more about the Arkhams, the family of the Arkhams, ooh, when it came before, right? Yeah. Because they, they, they made Martha and Arkham in that show. And like, there's a huge probability that they're going to dive into that aspect of it, maybe, and follow that storyline. And 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 maybe even this is about, you know, uh, Martha Arkham's past, maybe her her kind of psychosis as well. Like, what's happening there with her? That I'm, that's something that I haven't heard a lot of people talk about. And when you watch the movie, you're like that, you know, that might make sense for it to be where this show heads. For and you could still use some of those characters I just mentioned because. If you're creating, if this is the Reeves verse, then characters could appear in the Reeves verse at different timelines. Like the Joker, uh, Todd Phillips' Joker, right, takes place, you know, when Batman's a little boy. You could play around with timelines all you want because if if Hugo Strange is never going to come in contact with Batman, which some people would see as a mistake, but if that's never going to happen, why not use him on this show and make him something in this show? Same with Quinzel. Like you could do things like that and make them be, I mean, Quinzel would be weird without the Joker, but you can still get away with it, I guess, if she never turns into Harley Quinn, which, you know, it seems like a nineties trait of comic book movies, but there's a way to do it where you could take characters that coexist with Batman and bring them earlier on. Oh, I love that idea. I love that. And the idea of Hugo Strange being a linchpin, I think you could really have some fun with that. What's that show? I think it's called In Treatment. Um, have you heard of this show? I think this came out around the time I was in high school. And there, there's the guy in it is somebody big name. I want to say like Dennis Leary or somebody who looks like Dennis Leary. Um, but In Treatment was this show where it was uh, about a psychologist or a psychiatrist and the whole show is just him having sessions with different patients and depending what night of the week you watch it on that's the patient that comes on so it's like you know this lady she has appointments thursday night so if you watch thursday nights that's who he's treating and if they take the in treatment treatment pardon the pun and apply that to hugo strange Imagine him talking to all of these villains on an episodic basis. But we know as the audience that this guy is just as big of a psychopath as these people he's interviewing. Just the fun and the tension that you could have of literally scenes of Hugo sitting across a table in an examining room, speaking to somebody else at the other end of the table. Um, Those Arkham, the first Arkham Asylum game, you unlock those... uh, what do you call it? The interview tapes. Yeah, you know, yeah. Listen to them. Imagine a whole show of those kind of interviews. Like I would, first of all, it'd be cheap to make. And second of all, I would eat that up. 
Yeah, and you can get away with stuff like that on TV. Like, that's the thing. You can do those little details on TV where you can't get away with that on film. And I got to tell you, I have three of the Arkham games. I have only played two of them. I'm still trying to beat Arkham City. Oh, I'm so bad. I've had it. How I've had I've owned Arkham City for probably how long how old is that game? I got it the year it came out. I think that's I 2012, it. man. So I've had it for 10 years. Wow. I've never beat it. I'm the furthest I've ever been right now on my PS4 when I repurchased the bundle of them. I love the first one though. I that one, I the it's a, there's a simplicity of that one versus the next one where I am my Super Mario Brother quality gaming. Uh, it, it serves better for me on that <laughs> game than the second. The second one, I get frustrated way too much. I actually hand it over to my wife. I make her beat the levels for me. I couldn't, I couldn't catch Raza Ghoul's assassin, so I made her do it, and she got. I, I, I made some, uh, some, uh, some pasta, and she, and she did that. So what are you gonna do? <laughs> That's how, that's how we do it over here. I'm oh, just picturing think- that as like the two of you side by side on a couch. And you're just like, Ugh! And yeah. She just, she just takes I, it. And then and- I, I get up, I start dicing up onions and, you know, get some meat in there and make some sauce. <laughs> that's, that's not actually exactly what happened. Uh, but I, I do love those games. They're a lot of fun. They're, they're very complex. And I, I, I think, you know, the, the movie, the Batman movie, I think, bored a little bit from the games, not a ton. I think the Affleck one was going to borrow even more from it. But I do think there are elements that Matt Reeves took from that. I think Matt Reeves took elements from a lot of Batman stuff <clears throat> throughout. So it's not special that he took it from that at all. But I, I just think there's a, there's a a lot of... The thing that the Arkham show can have is it can be a lot of fun. It can be dark. It can be gritty. It can be scary. It can be funny. It can be everything you want it to be. And it can be those individual tapes, like you said. Like each episode could be about a different inmate in there. You mm-hmm. could, it could just be an anthology show, which I think would also really be a lot of fun. And... And if it if it works, okay, maybe you do another one. And if it doesn't work, you move on and you give me the Penguin show and you give me maybe a Catwoman show and you give me, you know, whatever other show you want to give me, you can throw out there because, it, you know, it's still, I got to go back. I got to bring back Peacemaker into this because I, that show was the most watched show in the world for a while. It worked on really? so many. Yeah, it worked. On, oh. I know it's wild. It worked on so many levels. It's a nobody character. And based on that show, if you think about it, you could have spinoffs from that show. And it's just like, if you want to build your Batman world, like, why, like, use that show as your, te- like, be like, just tell a story and create a world around it. And you could do it. And it's just, that show works because everyone kind of believed in it and went for it. There was no deviating, like, oh, no sidestepping. You just, and I think that's the thing with a lot of these shows on the DC, or a lot of everything on the DC side, Andrew, is there has to be a belief in what they're doing. And when you believe in what you're doing, it might not work at the end of the day. But if you believe in it, I think your product's going to be good. And I think you, we could be strung along for even more. Like, it just, I don't know. The fact that, that, that these, I just, I get frustrated, Andrew, that these shows have been talked about. But when you hear Matt Reeves talk about him now, he's like, well, you know, we're talking about it. It's like, well, is it happening or not? Like, stop. Like, this is like a whole DC problem. Stop dangling the carrot. Just do it and present it to me when it's done. Don't announce a thing until you've rolled camera at this point. Just do not speak its name until you've at least done one take. And I think Peacemaker was like already almost done shooting when they announced that it was <laughs> they're like, oh, by the way, Peacemaker's coming in a couple of like why peacemaker of all the characters and then you know and then you watch the show you're like okay fine uh, i i this you know the penguin show excites me this arkham show excites me i think there's so much that they could do here with the show do you think we will see the joker appear in this arkham show if it takes place uh, modern day do you think we will see the joker appear in the show if it takes place modern day i think that there's no way they can't put joker in it to tap dance around it would be weird right like he's he's there we know he's there we know Nigma, or rather Nashton Riddler is there. Um, so I think that it's not a question of if, it's just a question of when will the Joker show up um, and getting, who knows, maybe they want to do something different with his makeup. If that deleted scene is 100% not going to be part of the canon, maybe they want to play around with how he looks. I don't know. Uh, but I do want to talk the looks of these characters, James, because I think that there's an important an important hurdle that the show has to get over. And that hurdle is this. Obviously the nature of this movie 
the Riddler we got is not as garish as Riddler is usually want to be, right? We got a very toned down looking Riddler, but we still got a guy at the end of the day in a green mask with a question mark on him, right? The whole idea of setting a show in Arkham, you run the risk of, and it's just a risk mostly for fans of Batman, but it is a risk. You run the risk of having a show that looks very dull because if you give them 12 characters that they've been wanting to see for a long time and all 12 of those characters are just in orange jumpsuits with handcuffs, it's not visually very nice to look at. So how do they get around this hurdle? How do they show us characters like Joker, characters like, I don't know, Mad Hatter, whatever, Scarecrow? How do you show us the Scarecrow if he can't have his mask and he's just in an orange jumpsuit? Can you do that? Or should they find a way around it and get them in their clothes? Well, I would make... I wouldn't make Scarecrow an inmate. I would make him on the outside working in. Ah, oh, okay. That's, that's how that's call. how it started. That that and Hugo Strange would be on the other, same with Quinzel, but she wouldn't be Harley Quinn yet. I think the other point would be, um, I want to do another video with you on the Riddler later, so I don't want to touch up on that too much. But it is about the look of the Riddler. I think you, <clears throat> I think you, if you look at the, <clears throat> excuse me, geez, the Arkham Games. What are they wearing in the Arkham Games? Right, they kind of like run the asylum in a lot of ways. And so I think you do that. But now we've established that they wear, they do wear the orange jumpsuits in this. Um, but I think some of the characters, if you throw in like a killer croc, how does someone like that wear an orange jumpsuit? You know, how do they wear all that? So I think there is a way around it. And I think you get, you, you try to focus on the character uh, instead of, you know, the costume, like what characters would would benefit from being in Arkham Asylum and which ones yes. are more entertaining because I don't think, you know, because I know he said Mr. Freeze and people are like, Mr. Freeze is in the sequel, which I kind of don't think we're going to get Freeze in the sequel. I think he just liked the idea of Freeze, but we'll see where we go. But Mr. Freeze can't be in a jumpsuit, really. I mean, we saw him in Batman and Robin in one, but I, I don't think that, I don't think a char character of that caliber will be in this show. I don't think we're going to get the top tier Batman villains in this show other than the Joker and maybe a Riddler cameo, which we don't need. Like, the Joker's fine in the orange uh, attire because of his face and everything. So yeah. you can get around. I think you can get around it that way and using lower-tier uh, criminals in this that it's more their characters that are in, uh, appealing than their costumes. Uh, yeah, I like the sound of that. And another thing they could do, and this would require a bit of extra creativity on the costume department's part, but... You and I went to the same high school, and that high school had uniforms. Right? Oh, God, they did it ever. They, 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 did, they ever. did it ever. Those were, wow. They were just trying to go out of their way to make us all look as unattractive as possible. So. It was the worst uniform. Yeah, they were pretty the bad. Yeah, brutal uniforms. But what ended up happening, at least when I went there, is everybody, you know, in grade nine, everybody's all shy, whatever. But as kids got older everybody started just wearing their uniforms in certain ways. There were options. You could have like the gray sweater or the maroon sweater or a vest or whatever. So everybody started finding their look just through the uniforms and riding that. And before you knew it, you had a sea of uniformed kids, but everybody had their own style that they spun onto it. So they could theoretically do something like that. If everybody's got orange Arkham jumpsuits, but they don't all wear them the same way. Maybe, I don't know, maybe somebody does that thing where they, they take off yeah. the jumpsuit, the orange part, and they tie it around their waist and they're just wearing like a white shirt underneath. You could really get it some interesting characterization just through, oh yeah, you look at that, you're like, that is absolutely how the Mad Hatter would wear his jumpsuit because of course he would wear it that way. You could have some fun with that. Yeah, I never even thought of that. That's why I'm not a costume designer. <laughs> I for, I was trying to block high school out of my mind. Thanks for bringing that. You're welcome. Back to me. Oh man, I I yeah. We we couldn't really afford a lot of a lot of the wardrobe, so I had to wear the same sweater for a long time. I had, like, they were expensive uniforms, man. They were very expensive. They were ugly as sin, man. It was terrible. You're like, oh, I wore in my last couple of years. I wore. We're supposed to wear it for everybody that kid. Nobody cares. We wore gray <laughs> pants, like charcoal pants. And I actually started wearing blue pants. That oh, <laughs> I just went, rebel. I, I, rebel. Went, I got called down to the principal's office like twice. And and I, I can't remember. I never really got in trouble. My, my sister got called down once. And they called my mom. And my mom reamed them out hard. 
Like she lost it on them because she thought something was wrong. And they called about my sister's uniform because I think her shirt wasn't tucked in or something. Oh god. And my mom lost it. And so after that, we kind of <laughs> we kind of had a free pass on our wardrobes in high school. After that, <laughs> it was like, yeah, my mom, I remember she, my mom was like, What the hell is wrong? I'm like, oh, you put me in that school. What do you want? <laughs> Good times. You can't beat it. I love your idea though. Yeah, I think a costume designer could have a lot of fun with playing around with how all these villains would wear their costumes. But we're going to leave it at that right now. Is there anything you guys want to see in the Arkham Asylum show? Anything that you've heard that might be appealing to you? And do you think Joker is, do you think this will be taken over by the Joker and it will end up being a Joker show when it's all said and done? Andrew really hopes so. Yes. <laughs> Andrew. I'm getting welcome. the Joker tattooed to my whole body. One day you're going to like that character. Why don't you plug your, uh, your nonsense right now? My nonsense is called, I mean, my book is called Side Scroller. It's a novel written by me. You can buy it on Amazon right now. You can buy the paperback or the ebook. I'm sorry, usually I have it with me, but I forgot it today. It's literally right over there, but I can't really get up and get it. Uh, but it's a big orange and black book. You can't miss it. Just look up Andrew Fantasia, Side Scroller, and you'll find it on Amazon right now. Buy many copies, please. Buy them all. Buy them all. All right. And check them out on YouTube at Andrew Fantasia, uh, youtube.com slash Andrew Fantasia. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget to give us a like and a subscribe. And until next time, may you be the master of your own universe. Vengeance.